Asia that we're going to stick to HPU email addresses. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That makes sense. Okay. Keep it clean. Fantastic. All right. Hi, Trisha. Great to see you. Oh, she's putting on her headset. Hi, Paul. I'm sure Paul's jumping on here. How are you, my friend? I'm good. How are you? Good. Wonderful. Hi, Trisha. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Mike. <clears throat> and then is it Ching? Do I call you Ching? Hi, Ching. How are you? Great. Good. Wonderful. <laughs> so, um, uh, Kristen, you can let me know when, when you're ready for me to get going. I'm recording the session. I think everybody's joining in as we go. So, yeah, Mike, I think in the interest of time, there may be a few others that join, but it's, it's, a, it's one. So, okay, great. Go for it. And how much time do you, do I have for today? Until two. Okay. Got it. All right. So what I want to do then is I'm recording this session and I have three big things that I want to introduce the concept of how you can utilize this in the classroom. And then um, I'm going to give a quick overview of the different types of clusters of apps and simulations and interactive games that we've created so that you can then I can then direct you to more detailed little mini tours of the apps. We have created those. But today is really just an overview. So um, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, let me just introduce myself for one quick second here. And um, let me just open this larger and play the slideshow. So um, for just one quick second, I would just say um, I, I'm an associate professor at Azusa Pacific University. This is pretty close to my 20th year teaching orthopedics. Um, and I've learned a lot along the way and uh, about how I think students, I think I've thought a lot about resources that students need to learn better. Um, and what I'm going to show you today is things that we are actively using in our classroom. In fact, many programs are. And I, I hope that this is actually an open invitation to um, many, to all of you to give us feedback, to give us new ideas, to help us fill in the gaps of things that might be missing. Um, and so in a, in a nutshell, I'm going to show you first what PhysioU is and how you can log in. And then I'll show you little clusters of apps to kind of stimulate ideas of how you can use it. There are three main things that um, I'm going to share with you today primarily. One is the easiest way to use PhysioU, which is you now have a pretty complete, relatively complete video library of almost all the clinical skills that students learn in the major classes, all filmed the same way, organized the same way, easy for you to access as faculty and easy for the students to access. So I think that's one big piece. The second piece is creating an interactive classroom. There's lots of different ways to do that. We've tried some very easy ways, which are interactive case studies, and then now we've created lots of simulations that you will be able to leverage into your classroom. Um, and then some of the apps are a little bit more complex. The, the one that Paul's used in the past, the clinical pattern recognition orthopedics or the cardiopulmonary app, we've built it so that it can show a roadmap of how you look at a patient, how they move, what they complain about, what kind of testing you might choose to do and what's the evidence-based interventions, all of it's mapped out. So it's not just a video library. It's in fact a, a visual, it's a visual experience of clinical reasoning, how all the pieces come together. So let me take you first into, um, let me close out this actually presentation and just take you straight to our website. And this video actually I'm recording so that I can share it back with you when we're done here. When you log in, you'll see that once you're logged in and you say, remember me, it's always logged in. This is always open for me in ortho because then I can leverage it at any time that I want to show a technique, to pull something back from range of motion MMT or from physical agents. I have the power of almost every class in one place that I can link to. In these apps, we have sorted it 
by major categories. So for example, in the fundamental skills, which is one of the really popular set of apps, you've got your range of motion MMT and palpation app. Let me just take this for example. When you click into an app, our students know that before they come to class for shoulder week, they're expected to look through the video techniques of range of motion MMT so that they are prepared. Their eyes and their brains are already, there's a soft scaffold being built about all the techniques they're gonna learn. So what you see here, and most of our apps are organized the same way. All of this, I think, reduces cognitive load on the students because the resource always looks the same. So for example, when you look at something like range of motion, you have all of these different techniques. These are the videos and instructor talking about it. You have the basic description. So you have for all different types of learners, the auditory, the visual, you can have people who like to do, you know, read everything. You have your landmarks, some normal ranges from various, from various sources. And we've tried to make a connection between function and occupation related to why would some why would you bother to assess range of motion of shoulder flexion? Well, because it, it, it's related to all of these common functional activities. So I think making that connection early is so important. What I wanna show you here is that there is a sidebar that allows faculty to now, one, copy page title with link, and I want to add this into my lab handout. So let's say you already have a lab handout. I just want to augment it with PhysioU videos. This title is already hyperlinked. When, you, when the students click on this, it takes them directly to the video that you want them to watch. You can also copy thumbnail image. When you copy thumbnail image, you basically go back into the lab handout, and it takes the exact same image from your reference tool and puts it into your lab handout. So that's one way to leverage this resource is for almost every orthopedic skill, every cardiopulmonary skill, every neuro skill, all of the videos already exist for you to play with. This also means that you can, for example, go straight into the Oh, by the way, there's also copy page URL. Let's say your lab handout already has the title. You can already or always copy page, uh, page URL and just drop the URL there and students now have something to click on. So it's up to you. There's lots of different, there's lots of flexibility of how to leverage these into your classroom. Let me give you a, a separate example. Let's say you go to the neuro app. So I'm going to go to the neuro cluster. And I'm teaching balance this week. I can take any one of these tests, five times sit to stand, grab the page title, copy page title with link, throw it into my lecture. So I can either, I guess I could copy page title with link here, right? So here's your five times sit to stand. And I can also take this thumbnail image which of course in the, in the PowerPoint, you can already, you can technically just take that image and hyperlink it as well, up to you. Which means that in any of your lectures where you want to show a video, you can show a video, you can put a hyperlink so that when you click on that, it will automatically open into five times sit to stand and you can play that in class as a demonstration of something that you're talking about. What I find useful about this is that it gives the students a little bit of a pause as we're teaching and talking about all kinds of things, new things, old things. It gives students a little bit of a pause where they can catch up and you can play a video to illustrate something they're either going to learn in lab or something that you're using because you're talking about fall risk assessment. You always have this as a backup to kind of hit the learner from a different perspective. You don't have to just talk about, rattle off five different tests that you might use for fall risk. You can pick and choose three of them that you wanna show. And then you can just talk a little bit about the test. You can talk about, hey, these are the things that you're gonna watch before you come to lab. Here are some normative values for fall risk and your references. 
all of that's here already. And I think in general, uh, let me add this little piece in just because it's timely. If you click on this, you will see that we have mapped every single app to all of the CAPI standards. So that may come in useful for you at some point. So that hits the first kind of basic concept, which is for just about every class, if I go back to PhysioU here, if you look at fundamental skills, whoever is teaching physical agents, every physical agent has already been filmed for you. The students can pre-watch all of this before they get ready to come in for immersions. You know, I think it's a good habit, in fact, as you're talking about traction for that week, all of these techniques they should be watching. It creates context. It creates again, a scaffold in which you can add details. You can watch these videos again. You never have to worry about trying to set up a Zoom, get the camera ready so you can demo traction live. You, don't, you just don't need to do it. It's all, it's all been done for you here. And here in the video, there's me narrating how to set First it up. First, prepare the traction table. Attach the cervical traction unit to the main device you can go straight to the high speed video, which is instead of three minutes, it's, or it's about one minute, one minute and 15 seconds. And you can just stop the video and narrate over it. You can just talk. Okay, so this is a high speed video, or you can go to the gallery and just skip step by step. So what this does is it creates a lot of flexibility for you as an instructor. And I think it gives students who want to learn at different, in different ways, different ways to access the information. So let me just pause there just for a sec and see if there's any thoughts, comments, or questions about the idea of linking videos to your lab handouts or to your lectures. Hey, Michael, I tried to pull my... Uh page up and it didn't have those educator resources. All I had on the side was just the copy URL or send email. Oh, okay. So we just for, because I'm getting a list from Kristen of all faculty email addresses, your new email address will be faculty enabled. So you probably have a non faculty enabled uh, account. Okay. So yeah, you'll have all using that. my UC Denver one. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll make sure that everyone who comes in through Kristen's little spreadsheet will all have faculty access and that's where you get the copy thumbnail image and copy okay. copy title. Any other thoughts or questions about that? Okay, great. So let me go back to showing you around first the fundamental skills. So here you've seen physical agents. Um, Another really cool app actually created by Patty Nelson. She is an orthopedic specialist professor out of Texas. This would go very nicely with your anatomy class. So what she's done is she has bony and soft tissue palpation for all body regions, including nerve entrapments. And she's also drawn a lot of these structures onto the patient. So as your students are going through anatomy and you're trying to apply the anatomy, you now have this very simple and really clean, here is the upper trap or sternocleidomastoid, and here is how to palpate it. The sternocleidomastoid muscle creates neck flexion when operating bilaterally, and it creates contralateral rotation and ipsilateral side bending. It's very prominent on the anterior part of the neck, and you can follow its margins down to the clavicular head here, which is quite broad, and then the sternal head, which is much smaller, that attaches to the manubrium. So I'm just tickling your imagination here, but just showing you that all of this stuff can be done asynchronously and can be the connection between anatomy to functional application of, of the anatomy. So you've got this soft tissue palpation. And again, in the fundamental skills, you've got range of motion MMT, 
you've got assistive devices. Again, one of our instructors said, Mike, our students don't like to read about this, but if they could just watch a video of how to do a modified three-point gate with the various devices, they get it. So all of this has been filmed. So for example, here's axillary crutches, lower extremity affected. We film both right and left lower extremities. So here's the right, here is the left. Our students watch this before coming to class. When it's time for immersions, when they come in for lab, they're ready to go. We can pull up a few videos, talk about it, discuss why we would use it, and everybody takes their apps and they go practice. The other thing that I think is very valuable to pass on to you is that everything in the app can be shared with patients. So when we are teaching patients now how to utilize, how to use crutches and do a modified three-point gate, they watch the video together with a patient, they open the sidebar, and they create an email. They send this as a home program or a patient education or home caregiver education piece. So there is a create email function. It creates a link. So actually, let me close this. It creates a link, right? To whoever you're gonna send it to. And that person can click on that link and essentially watch the video. They don't need a subscription. It just expires after a couple of weeks, I believe. So all of that can be done here. Here's the link, Here who's, here's who it's from. I've shared a page from PhysioU and the patients can now just watch this and it expires at this date. So anything in PhysioU can be shared because, because we think that's another way for the, for the students to really leverage the resource is to be able to use it to make their clinic life more efficient, to make their practice better. So th this particular app covers everything from bed mobility to transfers, and all of these are filmed in a very generic way so that you can add your clinical reasoning or add nuances to the technique. We've just filmed the bare bones basic. We've tried to stay as centrist as possible for all the techniques that we film so that you can add in whatever variations that you would like. For example, in the range of motion MMT app, there's people using different types of textbooks, especially the MMT, there's, there's some variances. What we've done over time is we filmed alternative positions so that most textbooks are pretty much covered. So in the fundamental skills, you've got gait, Essentially, the gate app will cover everything you need to teach from your Rancho or Perry book, your range of motion, phase description, sorry, let me make that a little bit smaller, phase description, range of motion requirements for each phase, EMG activity for each phase, and then critical events. And then you have this whole library. Well, Actually, when you get beyond learning, you actually can go to analyze and now you have real-time video. Close up slow motion of different views and real-time range of motion. Like we use this in class all the time. We just stop the video and then we ask them what phase of gate? Right, what phase of gait are we at? What's the range of motion requirements at the hip, knee, and ankle? What muscles firing during the swing phase? There's your anterior tib. So there's lots of different ways to utilize some of these fundamental skills apps. That kind of leads me to a quick segue here, which is a lot of these apps have very simple and easy to use case studies. So in this app under analyze, one, you have all the common deviations filmed on real patients. Here's your trunk lean. Here is the associated phase, some potential causes. I think this is a very powerful conversation and the penalty. This covers everything from hip, knee, ankle, foot, and all the way to prosthetic gait. 
So you now also have prosthetic gait issues. So here's knee instability. Associated phase, potential cause, what is the penalty? When you wanna make this interactive, we have these little case studies. So for almost, for many of the apps, I would say more than 50% of the apps, we've created simple case studies. So this is a patient with medial tibial stress syndrome. She's a cross country runner. This is her history. They get to analyze the gate. So you can basically say, guys, in your Zoom breakout rooms, everybody, we're gonna do this 20 year old female case. I've broken you up into groups of five. I want you to go through the case, look through the description, kind of the, the, the subjective side. I know even at this point in the, in the curriculum, they haven't learned much. So we purposely made these cases relatively straightforward. No, I mean, even if they don't know what ag factors are and ease factors, factors are, it's the beginning of the exposure that I think is valuable. And eventually there's a list of questions. These questions all have answers already. It makes it easy for a faculty member while the students are discussing in their groups. I just tell them, guys, do not look at any of the answers. I want you to develop your clinical reasoning. While they're in their groups discussing, I'm looking at all the answers and preparing for the, the, the debrief, the discussion. So what deviations did you notice at the ankle joint? Insufficient pronation during loading response, right? What might you choose to examine for impairments? This is just, this is just me trying to think, how can I take a half step forward and prepare their brain, prepare? All of these are opportunities to create context for things that are coming. So it's really thinking about how do I cross the, the boundaries of the curriculum? So all of these thoughts, all of these uh, elements are relatively straightforward discussions used to help students take what is sometimes very somewhat dry and apply it to a clinical case. So there are case studies related to patients with neuro problems. There are case studies related to patients with prosthetic or with amputee amputations. Um, here is our stroke patient, two years post-stroke. And there are some questions to discuss. So that's one of the elements that I want to mention with, which is, if you think about the modalities app, if you think about um, the assistive devices app, all of them have very simple case studies. Here's your patient who has a right distal tibia and fibula fracture. Based on the information above, what assistive device would you recommend? All the answers are there to make it easy for faculty to deploy this. Like when I remember looking at case studies in the back of textbooks, I always have to flip to somewhere to find the answers. They're never quite in the place when I need them. All you need to do is be logged in at the beginning of class and know which case study you want to have the students do. And all of a sudden you've created an interactive classroom. I think that's especially important when you think about these hybrid models where the students really, really enjoy the discussion and the context that you bring into the didactic discussion. And I think it really creates the, the context for when labs come. It helps things seep in and sink in deeper. So let me just pause for a second and ask, do you guys have any questions or comments about what I've shown you so far related to the fundamentals? Hi, Mike, I do have a question and it might be a little off track, um, but I'm wanting to make sure that I don't forget to ask it if our, if our time runs low. So I have used the, so I teach cardio poem and so I've linked um, all the stuff into like into the LMS before when I had Canvas and I just had the students link out. I'm wondering if, if you have like an example of what it looks like in the LMS that you might be able to show us. Well. The or do you typically link out or do you typically link out and use it in that way into the website so we haven't made a direct link into any particular lms because it's um we just haven't had the time or resources to do it 
But usually if you cut and paste a link, as long as they click on the link, it will open a browser. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any other comments or questions? Okay, good. Feel free guys, anytime, just either um, you can do the little hand raise thing or you can just unmute yourself and ask. Let me show you briefly um, acute care and neurologic rehab. In acute care, assisted devices fits acute care. So you've already used that in, in the early fundamental skills. Um, you've already, uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about cardiopalm because you guys are already using it. Just know that there are lines and tubes, which is your quick reference I mean, you don't need videos for this. I thought the thing that the faculty asked for is essentially, hey, I would like a all-in-one solution to show my students what different lines and tubes are, what they're for, where they go, and also what are the clinical implications. So you've got all your lines and tubes and you also have your basic case studies here as well. So you have just these different patients and you're asking students to identify the kind of lines and tubes they have, what are they for, what are some contraindications, how would you ambulate this patient, what should you do if you pull out any of the lines, tubes, or drains. So again, small little things that make it easy for you to create an interactive classroom. This is actually a good segue for a second. Yes, comment. Okay. This is a good segue to just introduce the e-learning component of PhysioU. So here under acute care interactive review, you see these things called micro learning. Micro learning are essentially mini quizzes. You can leverage this as quizzes that students take for points or you can use it as part of your interactive classroom. So you can say, everybody, we're gonna take 10 minutes. I want you to go in and, and do your little medical terminology quiz. All faculty members have a key. So when you click on this, you will be able to see all the common terms that are gonna be asked, the questions, the questions and the answers. Okay. Um, hang on a second, let me try to mute. Let me mute everybody real quick. Okay. All right. Another example of this, for example, if I go back to micro learning, you have heart sounds, lung sounds, heart block, sinus rhythm. All of these are little games that I always wish I had to play. They're low risk and low stakes. So for example, here's the bracing game. Here are the common braces. There's little videos that they can watch. Did the therapist respond to the patient's complaint in the correct way? How should the therapist have responded to the patient? So you get to see the key. What happens when the students are done? Let me give you another example here. Here's a range of motion MMT game. Mini sims are a little bit different from micro learning. Micro learning is my, they're like interactive little quizzes. Mini sims are built around patient, patient stories. So for example, if I take this shoulder case, let me just give you one quick example of this. It won't take very long. In this shoulder game, the patient is complaining that he can't comb his hair, he can't wash his hair, and he can't lift his arm to put things away in a shelf. He can't drive to reach the steering wheel. So we asked the student, what motion do you think you should me measure based on his aggravating factors? So the answer is shoulder flexion. Great, good job. Let's watch this patient performing his aggravating movement. Okay, sure enough, that shoulder flexion, great. So again, I think it's about allowing students to play with their knowledge in a context-rich environment. I think this is a very important concept. It doesn't matter what type of environment you're teaching in. Then we ask them to access the information that they've learned. Where is the stationary arm? Where is the movement arm? 
And where is the axis? Oops, that's probably greater tubercle. Okay. Here, stationary arm. Let's put the axis of rotation, movement arm. And now apply the goni. and read the goni to make sure you know what you're reading. So I'm just going to choose, I don't know, let's, let's do that. It then asks, what are some normal ranges? So I'm just going to put that there. It gives you a summary of what you've just learned. And you get to either review, look at the things that you missed, or retry. What I do is I tell the students, hey, I, I need you to turn this in. You're going to do this at the end of shoulder range of motion week. And I need you to download your learning report and turn it in. I will take the highest score that you get. I, I can see how much time you spent, what dates you did it, what scores you got. I'm just happy that you're playing with your knowledge. So I give them very small course points. They just turn this in and we just give them small course points. So here is the game that they played, who played it, the date that they played it, and then here is the learning report that they're turning in. Every single one of these games, they can turn in these learning reports to you. It's the simplest way for us to help you hold students accountable and yet be, and yet interface with any type of LMS or any type of Google Drive or Dropbox, however you guys, you know, manage that. We just kept it as simple as possible. There are many games that cover neuro. So in the neuro games, we have a number of different patients. Many of you will ma recognize Mary. Mary used to teach at APU with us in neuro. So here are all real neuro patients and we're asking students to apply their knowledge on real patients. We also have from the orthopedic side, this is more for Paul and Paul and the team, you have mini sims. The mini sims, there's four right now. We have about 20 that are being vetted right now. Every single clinical practice guideline is going to be built into a mini, a mini formative simulation. My students will play this during neck pain week, before neck pain week. They will actually play to create a soft scaffold. It creates the context that I will, I will build on for the rest of the week in terms of lecture and lab. These games, if you look at educator info, are tied directly to the, this clinical practice guideline. There's nothing in the game that isn't in the guideline. Here is the decision tree that it, this game is built upon. And essentially, if you look at the learning objectives, you'll, you'll understand every single question that's in the game. You can actually play through the game. So if I hide educator info, you can look at the course key. You can play through the entire game. And what you'll see is it begins to develop the clinical pattern. It shows them the special tests that the guidelines would say to do. It helps them to begin to make some decisions about treatment and, um, and therapeutic exercises and they don't have to know a thing, they're gonna learn something. It's, it's something I've always dreamed of building because ortho is such a massive beast that anytime you can do something fun and safe for them to play with, to kind of help them kind of dip their toes in the water, it makes everything much easier when you get to the didactic and lab components. It's really about building patient context early. So there are a number of these, there will be about 20 plus, 20 something of these guideline based games. They're all formative. And in the macro sims, the macro sims are more summative. They're longer. They take about 30 minutes or so. They will ask them to, to interpret outcome measures. They will ask them to make determinations about patient irritability. Um, they will ask the student to regress or progress a treatment after the patient comes back from the evaluation, like week two. These games are tougher. 
I use these at the end of shoulder week, not at the beginning of shoulder week. But I think what you're doing is you're bookending all of the basic didactic knowledge with clinical context on the front and then on the back end. So this is, this is just my philosophy of after 20 years of trying to figure out how can the students be that confused when their instructor is as brilliant as me, right? That's you always usually how we think because what we didn't do well is create context. We didn't build soft scaffolds along the way for them to hang their information, to store the information and draw the information out. This is all you see in Physio U is me playing with technology and trying to figure out why certain things didn't work over my 20 years of teaching. So you can see the most developed amount of simulations is really in the orthopedic side because I see so much chaos in, in, in the orthopedic curriculum because it's so massive and it covers so many different courses, TheraX, Pathophys, Range of Motion MMT, Elements of Neuro. It's like, it's so messy that if you can allow students to play in a relatively risk-free environment, you'll be surprised at how much things they can sort out, how much quicker they can organize their mind. So this is just, I just want to show you how the e-learning components can be built in. So you've got wound care games, you've got range of motion MMT, a bunch of really cool physical agents games, neurosims. We have some really, really powerful neuro macro sims that are coming from Sarah Craft at MUSC, we're pretty much done with, I think two or three of them. They're, they're much more involved and they're really amazing for developing the student's mind. And you've got all of these other things. We've got a bunch coming, posture games, diagnostic imaging games in our partnership with JOSPT, all of the musculoskeletal imaging features are now converted into games. Um, we have a bunch of really valuable things that are coming, uh, coming here. Um, let me take a pause. I know this can seem overwhelming. Are there any comments or questions so far? Any thoughts? Here is just a note. If you want to assign a game, all you need to do is go to the game, then copy page title with link and drop it into your syllabus. So if I drop that into my syllabus here or into my lab handout, whatever it be, the students will know now, please play this sim and submit the learning report. That's it. Once they click on it, it takes them to the game. It's linked to their account and they are learning asynchronously. So that's how I deploy all of these little, all of these little purple e-learning components. Let me give you a glimpse of neuro rehab. Actually, neuro, I've covered, uh, I've chatted with Kristen a lot about neuro. There's neuro exam, which covers all of your basic examination techniques, including Fugelmeyer, Stream, Asia, Vestibular, we're working on some really cool vestibular sims right now. And then you've got your neuro exam app. So I'm gonna, here is your neuro, ex, uh, neuro rehab app, which covers a lot of your PNF, NDT-ish, PNF-ish type techniques. And then you've got a PNF app and our most recent release, which I'm really excited about task analysis. It covers, from the learnings perspective, sheets task analysis and headman movement analysis. So you, we believe that in some cases, modeling is really important. So what Mary did was we filmed the patient going through the task from different views. or simultaneous. And then Mary went through and did an analysis on initiation. So this is just initiation, execution, termination, and then how she would have documented this in a soap note. 
And for each of those phases, you can see she's done an analysis here. So the students, when they're learning, they can use the learn phase for either Sheets or Hedman. And these are just different patients doing different tasks. In this, in this case, the categories are a little bit broader. Again, there's Mary has done the analysis already for students to watch. Eventually, they will go to practice. In practice, again, you can either follow Sheets, the different tasks that Sheets has. But this time, they watch the video and they fill in the worksheet and turn it into you. So this is something they can do in class or in lab or in their Zoom breakout rooms. Okay, so they watch the video together. If you go to practice headman, you can see 42 year old female, 42 year old male, typical, patient with COPD, patient with right total hip arthroplasty, spinal cord injury. And we essentially went into their homes and filmed so there's always a comparison to typical, that's me. And you can film, you can have the students do an analysis of these different tasks. Okay, a, a really cool example of this is if you look at John here and you look at him doing financial management, you can see him opening and counting money. You can look at it from a different view. You can compare to typical, and then you can have the students do their analysis. Here, you also have what we've done is we have curated these patients and the main things. So here's a history. The students can read about what she's gone through. And then we picked and chose a few key things getting in and out of car, getting in and out of car for students to now analyze. So instead of giving you this massive video library, which is practice, we've just hand selected with Mary's help. What are some of the key tasks that the different patients with right-sided CVA or spinal cord injury, what are some common things that you would want the students to think about? So that's the task analysis app. That covers kind of the neuro segment. And I would just add in PEDS here. In the PEDS component, what we've done is we have filmed this baby. Only different, the only different baby is month zero. We, we captured him too late, but month one through month 12 is the same baby. So now what you can do is use this instead of looking for videos on YouTube or trying to sort out your own videos in your Google Drive, everything here is now organized for you. So here is sitting. This is month three. Here are the observations, a typical development, and you can compare month to month. Here's month one. So the power of these videos is how they are organized and sorted, and also how the students can now access it on their own all the time. This also has your common reflexes. What the stimulus is what the response is, when it should appear and when it should integrate, and what are some atypical development things that you should look out for. And there is also observe. So um, in the observe section, we have collected videos of different babies. And so when you look at the different babies, you can show the video in class, ask the students what they see, then you can open up the observations. Of course, you may be already prepped, but or you can just call out what you see. And you can ask the students, what do you think is their functional age? What is their actual age? What is the diagnosis? And what are some short-term and long-term goals? Again, 
It's all about application and making it easy for you to facilitate an interactive classroom. So that is what the observe section is. We've basically sorted it by different tasks and put, put children, different children in here so that you can, you can take these as examples. And we've been filming in our studio. We're filming um, a lot of actually common interventions on different types of, uh, types of children right now for, for the kind of the intervention side of pediatrics. So that covers kind of the neuro section. Now, I didn't want to miss one ch this chance to actually share with you that for a lot of the basic classes, so let me just choose um, something like range of motion MMT app um, here. Under the educator resources, it takes you to our website, educator resources. There is teaching content. In this teaching content, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger for you. You will see that there are some lab handouts. So for range of motion MMT, for example, shoulder, there is a Word doc that you can modify or a PDF that you can already just straight up use that covers all the basic bony and soft tissue palpation. For example, you could say, guys, for all palpation, I need you to do this on your own. All of the techniques are listed in your lab handout and you can click on the video and watch the video while you're practicing on each other or on somebody. All of this is already done for you. So this, is, this was the original palpation stuff that we had. We built it into the Range of Motion MMT app because we kind of teach it around that time. You also saw me show you the newest Surface Anatomy palpation app. You can choose how you want to use it. You can also see in this lab handout that if you go all the way down, so I'm going to scooch all the way down here, all of the range of motion MMT techniques are all listed here. So here is abduction grade zero through two. The information matches Physio U. Here is the muscle that you're testing. And all of these are hyperlinked videos. So whoever is teaching range of motion MMT, or if I go back here, whoever is teaching physical agents, here is all of your electrotherapy. Everything is already built for you. Contraindications, precautions, the setup, purpose, indication, setup, and video. So the power of this, it means that your students are actually coming to class prepped for many of these motor skills. I really think, I really think there's something to the idea that motor skills weren't meant to be taught in a show and go fashion. Like I'm gonna show it to you when you come to lab, good luck, go practice. It really should be, you guys watch before you come to class. I'm going to show you the video again and talk about it and add some context while I'm in class. When we go to lab or your immersions, you're going to watch the video again, be prepared when you come for the immersions. And now you always have this resource that's also following them into their clinical setting. So for, for the ClinEd group, for ClinEd, know that the more you as faculty use these apps throughout the curriculum, the more comfortable the students feel in accessing this resource when they finally get out into the clinic. That's another major benefit of this type of resource. It's centralized and it follows them in a mobile way. Let me think, is there anything else, major things I want to show? I mean, the, uh, the pharmacology app is a very nice app that, that Essentially what we did with the pharmacology app was we simplified it in the sense that you don't need so much information like you would get from an Hippocrates app, things like that. This is completely searchable. This was built with a pharmacist. And so when you look at these different medications, you'll see the basic information, common brand names, pharmacologic category, adverse reactions, common and serious. 
and where available, like not all of them have rehab implications, for, but for a lot of the common ones we see, you have the implications for rehab here. There's case studies as well. So some common, some very simple but common cases that you want to apply the knowledge. That's the pharmacology app. One of my, one of the cool, really cool apps that we've been, we've been playing with, this evidence-based taping app. Essentially what we did was we did a literature review of what are some of the best tape jobs that have evidence behind it. You have all your basic taping principles. You can watch, have the students watch a history of taping. You can have them look at the clinical reasoning behind taping. These are all short mini lectures. How do you apply tape? How do you do consent properly? What are some other considerations like tape reactivity or infection control? And eventually, the way we're using it in class is, first, they have to know the different types of tape. And then as we go into each body region, here's shoulder, here is external support, glenohumeral joint unloading, a quick glimpse of the materials you need, a short video on how to measure the length of tape that you need. Here is the actual video with her describing how to do it. There is a high speed video, so you could watch the whole thing in 22 seconds. When they're done, there is a 360 video so that they can kind of get a glimpse at how the tape job is. They can look at the gallery of the steps of application. And there is a video of common things you would wanna to do to reassess the patient after your tape job is done. Here is patient education. We ask the students to read this through so they know what to say when patients ask. But this is also something that they would email to the patients here, create email. So if I give the patient this type of tape job, I will send them this email. Wherever possible, for example, some of the other tape jobs, let me give you an example of, let's say, um, ankle foot. Um, condition, Achilles tendon unloading. If you look at patient education, there is instructions for how the patient can apply it themselves and we filmed it from a first person Even perspective. With the affected ankle on top of the non-affected knee in a figure four position. So now patients can tape their right ankle or their left ankle, and they can do this by sharing that email. This is how the students will learn to tape in class and then use this as a clinical, you know, clinical efficiency tool when they get onto the clinic. Here's the evidence behind the tape job. And then here's the consent form. So I'm going to save the last seven minutes. There is, Paul, I did not get to the ortho stuff because we've talked a lot about the ortho stuff before and I'm happy to do that. The ortho stuff is, there's a lot of stuff built into it. I'm happy to go over it with anybody who is teaching ortho, but I know Paul is the main one. Um, I'm happy to talk in more detail about that. I would just say this, in the website, under educator, so if I just click on educator or faculty, you will see that I have broken these same apps into these groups. And each of these apps have like a five to eight minute tour it's me talking about what's in the app and how to use the app in your classroom. So you could basically go to any one of these sections. So if you go back to educator, physical therapy, faculty, if you're like, I teach, you know, I teach um, fundamental stuff. I teach the, the, the range of motion MMT. You can go straight down to range of motion MMT app and watch this quick little video. So it'll take you in a little bit deeper. My goal today was really to give you a little bit of an overview and a, some ideas of how to use it. One big recommendation I have for you is whenever you can, 
open the app in class, show them and talk them through, use kind of your clinical context and apply it and show them how to find things in the app. The more you do it, the more comfortable they become in using the tool for their own. They, they make it their own. That's a really important, that's a really important concept because there's so many things in these apps now that it can be a little overwhelming. But if you're like, all right, guys, I'm opening the cardio pull map today. Today we're talking about cardio muscle dysfunction. Let's take a look at how this what this patient complains of. When you do that, you are adding to their knowledge in an organized visual way. And it helps them, it unlocks the resource for them. The other thing I would say is the easiest way to start with PhysioU is to think about my lab handout and my lectures. How can I augment them with these videos? How do I copy page title with link and add the image, right? Pretty much for all techniques. So if I go back into physical exam here, objective exam, lung auscultation, all of these techniques, you can copy page title with link and copy thumbnail image. So it's a very fundamental, easy way to leverage PhysioU into your classroom. And I think what you'll find is that when your students get into a habit of exploring the app, of, of exploring the lab handout and watching the techniques on their own, you're halfway up the hill already. And then when you watch the video again in class and you add clinical context on top of the video, so you get to stand on the shoulders of the videos and then leverage your clinical expertise to frame the videos into a meaningful, into a meaningful context. All of that, I promise you, will transform the way that the students are ready to learn when they come to the, to the immersions. So I'm going to stop there and just open it up for any comments or thoughts. There's almost more there than any one person can handle in one hour, but I hope that that gives you a little bit of a glimpse of how you can use PhysioU. Yes, Kayla. Yeah, so, um I, the pharmacology is a little bit new to me since I first started using it. And I'm wondering, so we have a standalone pharmacology course, but obviously teaching cardio poem, I need to kind of emphasize uh, with the students, you know, specific cardiovascular and pulmonary medications and can see this. And I'm wondering if you could kind of maybe give an example or give me some advice on how I might leverage um, that app to kind of supplement that, knowing that they have like the baseline information from taking pharmacology and supplement it in my course. So you can see that we've added the categories. If you click on categories, you have all of these basic medications. You have these adverse reactions related to the class. So, sorry, let me, so you see how common adverse react reactions related to the class here are some common medications related to that. If you click for more details, it takes you to the medications that you can actually then click into. And then it's, it's really about how you can easily cross link. So what I would say is as you're in cardiopalm class, you're, you bring up certain medications, you pre-test it. In general, everything should be here that you need, but you type in, you know, any of the medications and it brings it up and then you can kind of dig in a little bit deeper. You show them how you can leverage the app to kind of expand their mind a little bit. So that's how I would, how I would try to kind of tease out of your cardio poem class and then tease into the pharmacology. And just by the, by the way that this is organized, it's already going to help whoever's teaching pharmacology. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Other comments or thoughts? I have a quick question. Sure. Uh, and first, uh, thanks, of course, for going over all this with us. I really appreciate it. Um, but uh, do you, by chance, uh, either have or is it maybe in the works to to have the ability to um, record through the app as well? Uh, so, like, let's say I uh, wanted to show um, like form while doing a certain exercise. 
and then point out uh, various things and then be able to you know draw a line just like other you know motion analysis type applications. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what are your thoughts on that? I guess. Yeah, we haven't chosen to do that because it creates a whole different world of chaos. Like, where will the videos you film be stored? How will you get access to them? So for that kind of stuff, we haven't even built in the option. What I would, as an open invitation to your group, um, I'm, we're doing that with Tufts as well. Meaning, as your faculty, because you guys are working so closely together, I think that's what's unique. One of the unique things about how you guys are building your program. And as you begin to see holes that Physio you could help fill, you have my ear. Like we're neighbors, we, we film, we have a studio. We can film lots of things that might be missing. Whenever, whenever people ask for things to be filmed, I always bring it to the team and we determine whether that really fits entry level. Like I'm really, really not into adding too much to what is a very overburdened curriculum. And it was interesting, um, you know, I think it was, it was um, Mike Walker, at, at Baylor, he said, some of his faculty said, hey, some of the transfers, we do it a little bit different. And then actually he responded to that professor and said, oh, actually Mike, keep the video simple the way it is. We can add variances if we want. Don't start filming all kinds of weird different options because then it gets really messy, right? And that's, that's kind of where we're at as a profession too. Things are a little bit messy because everybody's doing it their own way. So I think what we've tried to do is if there are things that you begin to see that are either wrong or are holes that really ought to be an entry level, I would love to get an email from you. And oftentimes what we ask that instructor to do is, hey, could you just film the way you want it done or what's wrong with what we did so we can look into it and, just, and choose to film it better or, or film it right or film new techniques that we need to add in. So that's one thing that we can always do. Um, I'm not sure we're ready to open it up for anybody to film their own stuff because um, we haven't we haven't thought through the mechanism for storage and delivery of sure. what you record. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, I'll just say this real quick because I actually have another meeting. Um, yeah. But I, what I was also thinking with with that was it could even just be not even a video that's saved per se, as much as this video can be recorded I can show it to you now and I can show you wow. some of the lines and things and then and then maybe it's gone but at least it provides that capability to uh, to show that um, in real time I like um, the idea a lot and my tech team will be terrified to hear from me <laughs> this evening but yes that wouldn't be that hard to do that wouldn't be that hard to do meaning it would be nice if you could just overlay a screen tool that allows you to do degrees and arms and things like that. I'll ask, I'm okay. sure that they'll say, Mike, have you looked at your product pipeline? And do you know that we're already booked out till 2023, <laughs> late December? I'm like, guys, this is just such a small thing. I mean, you know. <laughs> we do, if it helps at all, Jacob, we do have a tool that we'll be using that will allow us to do that right in the LMS. And so if you have PhysioU that's kind of linked out to their, both their app or the website in the LMS, you'll be able to do that with our Harmonize. Um, Perfect. Function. Okay, yeah. then I'll just I'll just need some uh, maybe a quick. Yeah, we, yeah, uh, we all need training on that. on that, Jacob. We all yeah. really need training on that. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no worries. Well, thanks, Mike. Yeah, absolutely, guys. I will send this video out to Kristen. Kristen can pass it on. I think actually I'll probably send it out to all of you, and I'm happy to meet up anytime. If any of you ever have questions, I can always go into a deeper dive on any of the apps based on your particular content area. But I don't want to take any more of your time. I'm really thankful of your support and excited to see how, how your students and you guys, you know, how it benefits education uh, and working together with you guys. Thanks so much, Michael, that's great. You're welcome. Have a great afternoon mm -hmm. here. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you.